There's so much money in the music industry from helping artists get their music heard. And one, you have to, of course, get a client, but the most important part are the things you do when you have the client, because managing an artist means getting more and more and more money from that same person and everybody they know. Even when it comes down to small tips like don't be too available. So check out this video if you wanna understand not only how to get people to pay you in the industry, but how to get them to keep paying you over and over again. Let's get it. What's up, my name is Brand Man Sean and my agency has helped over 100 artists grow their fan base and get millions of streams. I say that just so you understand that this is coming from experience so you know who you're getting the information from. Let's get into the video. Quick couple of notes before I get into the first tip. First, this is one of the first videos of Music Marketer Monday where I give tips for people who wanna be music marketers in the industry or just wanna help artists with some type of services in general. And also, I'm gonna be honest, I have seven plant tips, but I do this every day. So there might be some things that pop up along the way. We might get some bonuses. But with that said, let's get this thing going. Tip number one is to send updates to your clients. Now, I know that might sound obvious to some people, but a lot of people actually miss out on this. You need to be able to send updates and you need to have a consistent cadence. Now. There's some things that need to be in your updates when you're working along in this process. One, you need to send some stats over, right? Let's say you're running a campaign for a client. You need to let them know that these are the current metrics and be clear if y'all are on pace to hit the goal that you agree with with the client or not, right? Let them know if things are going well or not. Now, the second thing though, expands on this you need to actually explain what's going on i know you might think hey this person came and got my marketing services right and they should pretty much understand how this stuff goes but you'll be surprised people do not understand what's going on that's part of why they came to you so this is your moment to solidify your expertise and let them say yo i like working with this person because not only is he just running some ads he's establishing himself as a music marketer somebody who's a mind that that I value and that cannot be duplicated. People can go anywhere to get somebody to run some ads or run a lot of different types of campaigns, but they can't duplicate your mind, your advice and your approach to helping them. So make sure that you explain exactly what's going on. Let them know if it's good or bad because clients time and time again, will just see numbers. Okay, yeah, I see the numbers. This is the cost per click or this is how many views, but they don't know if it's bad. They don't know if it's good. They don't know if they should pivot. They don't know what any of the feedback means, right? You can let them know, well, it doesn't seem like people are taking well to your song based on the other campaigns that we ran, right? Maybe you should switch your song. It doesn't seem like um, that this is gonna get traction fast enough or it's right on pace, or maybe we should come up with another idea or something if it's an influencer campaign. Maybe we need a different piece of um, creative for the ad that we're running. All of these things are meaningful, right? And you can even also, give them information about how things are connected from let's say the ad that you're running and how it's spilling over to other parts of whatever you're doing right because be clear again people do not understand exactly how this works you will be surprised i'm talking about people that we've had who are managers on big artists right <laughs> they want to know and another thing is not only do some people not understand there's also some people who literally just don't have the time to comprehend and dig into it. So they're coming to you for this convenience. That's one of the biggest pieces of game that you will get and you will realize, especially when you work with bigger clients, it's not that they can't get somebody to do it or sometimes they can't hire somebody, have somebody on their team to do it. It's about convenience, not about the money, the convenience of having you do it, not about the expertise, the convenience of having you do it and them not having to think about it. All right, now let's move on to the third one. So the third tip is to have a close call why is this so important when you have a closing call well actually let me back up maybe you need to be clear on what a closing call is a closing call is the last call that you have after a campaign is done right maybe you had some calls with them in between depending on how your process goes you might have sent some updates but you want to end the campaign with a call and you want to give them an analysis of how the campaign went from your perspective any potential improvements, the pros and cons, if you think they should keep running the campaign, if you think they should stop or whatever, or if you don't really have any clarity at all on that, now nah, you probably don't wanna say that, right? 
But you have that closing call. The value of this is, again, it solidifies you as that mind that they can go to. Somebody who is a thinking person, not just a button pusher, not just a message sender, right? So it also establishes that again. You tell them how it goes. You're building that relationship, having that honest feedback in that open forum. You will be surprised how much people appreciate conversation just because most people will not talk to them and the bigger clients as well as you work your way up that ladder they're going to want to have a relationship have some kind of contact and it's best to start with doing that and get that practice when you start small otherwise you're going to all of a sudden talk to a big client and you're like oh i don't even know what to do on this call or what do i say on this call right because they're going to want it and they're going to be worth doing it so you're going to do it but then not know what to do right this is also a moment to get more money right so when you actually have this call especially if you think it's going well you say hey do you want to do another campaign talk about it talk about what that might look like these are some of the things that we could do next and get some more money because the best clients to get money from are the clients that you already have not creating new clients creating new clients is always going to be more expensive than getting more money from your current clients so take that call you didn't have to run any new ads you didn't have to do any new post on instagram or facebook or do any hustling and networking they're already there talk to them and ask them yo like would you like to continue i think you should based on x y and z and if you don't have a specific reason that they should continue you can at least ask them what do they want to continue or do they want to push another song right those are all some things that are really relevant also on this closing call referrals you can ask somebody especially if it went well right and they're happy hey you know anybody else that needs to run a campaign you know be sure to let them know that i got them all right i got you and that name that word of mouth there's nothing stronger than that right we have we recently a couple of weeks ago got an artist that probably already has 30 million monthly listeners he's a, a a staple name that a lot of people know all because of word of mouth somebody else send this artist on over to us these referral calls and establishing relationship is extremely important. I'll get deeper into establishing a relationship from a business side in the music industry and how that works, especially through your services. But that is the hack. Having services and things like this is the way to build your relationship faster than almost anything else. All right. Now, let's get to number four. Be transparent. You have to let people know how this thing is going. Is it going good? Is it going bad? What do you think? What does the process look like? All those type of questions, they help put people at ease. People get scammed so much in this industry. They are, have so many people that are incompetent in this industry. You just being a decent person actually becomes a competitive advantage. Literally not fucking somebody over is a competitive advantage as a marketer or general service provider for an artist and their teams in this industry because so many people are pieces of shit up apparently right i know a client that got scammed for 24k when stuff like that happens you could just be a decent person do half of a good job and still be better off so don't be too nervous as well because there's so many people doing so bad when you're first starting off even when you're still developing you're probably doing better than most of these people let alone as you get better and better and better over time all right tip number five and i know some of y'all will not like this one that is use the artist platforms when possible now what do i mean by this this is really specific for ads especially their facebook ads right their youtube ads account their tiktok ads account now i'm not saying that you have to go get their login and go in through that way i'm talking about connect it from your account so you can run it in their account through your account now why won't a lot of people like this because if they see me running their ads and everything i'm going to do they're just going to run off and all of a sudden they're not going to need me anymore who cares who cares and I know that's hard to hear at the beginning because you're like, I want to have as many clients as possible. I want them to need me. But the reality is those people were not going to become a repeat client in the first place. Be happy you got the one off money. They probably don't even have the money for a second campaign. And even if they did, their mentality is so twisted. They don't understand the value of having a good relationship with a solid marketer and building that over time. Right. There's just no way. Now, it's fine 
as well when some clients up front will say, hey man, I just want you to set this up, run it for me so I can get to know where things are going. And then I'm gonna go try to run it for myself. That's cool as well. Be clear. Most of these people do not want to do this. Many will do it if they have to, but they don't have the money to continue. So just establish that relationship. Dang, he helped me out. He got things going for me. Now that I have a little bit money, more money down the road, I'm gonna go back to him because I really don't want to be running these ass in the first place. I got too much shit to do, right? So be cool with running ads and letting them see what you're doing because if they decide to run off, cool. But the best clients and the biggest clients are going to you for convenience. I messed that word up. They're going to you for convenience, right? And they're going to you for how you think, not just the simple ads that are running and the numbers that are popping up as they go. It's so much more than that. Now, if you're not in a position to think beyond that and have that value beyond that, that that's something that we train people on and we talk about. So watch these videos and you'll be able to start to get a little better idea of how to present yourself as somebody who's worth more than just an ad because those people are a dime a dozen. Now, Here's another thing when it comes to running through their account, it prevents headaches. There's a lot of people that already feel weird about what are they really doing? How much money are they spending? Are they keeping a lot more of the money and not really running ads? Cause a lot of scammers do do that, right? So there's those trust issues there, which means they're gonna be asking you way more questions than they normally would. And when they're asking you way more questions than they normally would, you're gonna be doing way more work having to answer those questions and have more interactions. And now you're making less and less money cause you're spending more and more time on this one single client. So it creates more friction. It creates more energy that has to go out for one client and you're wasting your time when things could be running smoothly they can see everything that they need to see and you just send your updates when it's time to send your updates versus having to answer a question every single day uh what's the update i want to ask how the ads doing today right because another option could be you create a dashboard which we've done we've invested spent money on technology to build back dashboards from scratch and hack together other dashboards and all these things experimentally one, it's not worth it. We'll get to that in another video. We've actually downsized from the things that we had built before. But for now, just know that it is not worth it to run ads in your platform just because you think people might run off with your sauce because there's not much sauce that you can provide over most ad runners, especially if the budget's small anyway. Number six is have an open line of communication. Why is this so important and what does it look like? Well. It's extremely important to have that open line of communication through email, through having phone calls and that being an option, right? The details of how to set that up, that's an entirely different like conversation, but you wanna have some form of open communication throughout the campaign process because that feedback is invaluable, especially when you build your business up and you're starting out. So you don't know if clients are happy or not. You don't know if they have a lot of questions or if they're angry, frankly. You have no idea, all of that is a black box but what happens is when they pose questions to you you start to realize oh man there's some gaps in my process because i don't have an answer for that or maybe i could have provided that earlier so we never even had to waste time having this conversation so for future clients i'm going to put all this up front so now we save all kind of time they're going to have all their questions answered you build your own frequently asked questions list these are the type of things that happen from having an open line of communication you start Start to get information on the little details that can be improved or need to be eliminated completely. All right. So have that open line of communication. It might feel like more work at the beginning, but it's what's going to give you an advantage in the marketplace as things get harder and harder and harder over the people who don't. They try to do it the easy way. They don't wanna to talk to anybody. They don't even really wanna do services correctly. So they're getting some money short term, but nobody actually values them. So when the marketplace shifts and, and they don't have any relationships established because they never really talked to anybody and really built with them and people don't have a value for how they think, how they see things and that relationship in general, those people are gone, they out of here. But you'll still have a way you will still have something 
that you can figure out, right? Because they see your value in this one thing, even if you have to switch to a completely another type of service, another type of campaign, another position in the industry, you've now established relationships, face card, and an understanding of how to navigate conversations and establish your value. That is why you want to talk to people. Now, I'm not saying talk to everybody and I'm not saying talk to people 24 seven and they don't have an open line of communication for you at all times, talking to you five times a week, three times a week, even one times a week oftentimes is enough. But understand there has to be some communication in some form. Now let's get to number seven. Don't be too available. Now I talked about this in the teaser for the video and I know it sounds a little weird, right? Why would you not be too available to have a better relationship with your clients? Cause don't they oftentimes wanna be able to talk to you, have access to you whenever they can and whenever um, they're thinking about a random question, wanna be able to text you and hit you up? You don't want that. You just do not want that. One, it's hard to sustain as you grow, right? And you don't want to just be having to be on call for people who probably aren't even paying you that much. I'm, you can be pay, getting paid well, but they're not paying you like it's a regular job and you should be answering on their beck and call. That's probably not happening. So those things are cool, but here's the more important reason that you want to establish that. It's going to force clients to actually think before they speak to you, right? Those little questions here and there, they'll be asking things that they could probably answer themselves instead of doing a quick Google search. They'll ask you or say, hey, can we hop on a call? And it'll be for one question. And now you had to block out 15 to 30 minutes of your day just for one quick question that really wasn't worth it because to them it felt so important. Like this is urgent. This is so meaningful and significant. It's a big deal. This is my campaign. It's gonna have such a massive impact, but nah. I'm sorry, artists, it doesn't, all right? That's how it typically goes. It's like, yo, honestly, this is a common issue. All you gotta do is this and you're good, but it actually has zero impact on this campaign. You were just a little uncomfortable for a second, right? So you want them to think before they reach out to you. You also want them to organize and have as much of their um, processing done on the front end and collection of questions already created on the front end. They know, hey, I can't talk to them every single day, so I need to make this serious. I need to put all my questions in one so you save your time, you optimize your time, and this is how you get more value out of each client while still giving them a high quality of service because we wanna do both. How can we give high quality priority style service while scaling up as much as possible with as few people as possible when I'm providing a service? And then also, if you have like call times available and you're like, hey, yeah, we can talk every week at this time, they will hop on just cause not even having anything to say. And you might not even have an update. So having these periodic times that, hey, we can talk every single day at this time, or we can talk every single week at this time and you schedule the calls ahead of time, that doesn't work too well either, except for specific types of campaigns where it's more dynamic and there's a lot going on. But let's just say ads for example, cause I've been using that a lot in this particular video. You don't likely need a weekly call time scheduled for the entire period of the campaign. Now, like I said, that was number seven, but I actually got eight as well because our company is doing this every day. So there's always more and more to talk about, but I'm gonna make this the last one for now. Tip number eight, be proactive about negative instances. When negative things happen, you wanna get right on it, get to them first. Yes, it might be uncomfortable. Yes, it might suck that you might've made a mistake because you overspent some ad dollars or the campaign's going really, really bad and it might not even be your fault, but still there's a discomfort in delivering bad news for a lot of people. Be upfront about it, get to it as fast as possible so at least you stop the leak, you stop the bleeding and people will respect you. Respect is extremely valuable in this game. I went back to establishing your authority, people valuing how you think, people valuing a relationship with you, people having respect for you. All these things are the things that allow you to evolve in the marketplace where you see people pop up. Oh, this is an ad agency. This is an ad agency. This is somebody who was on YouTube talking about running campaigns and things like that. But all of a sudden, I don't really see them as much as possible or that they never actually work with real clients and elevate and have some real things to show for it because they haven't established brand and respect running a real service style 
that people can value them for it who are actually running campaigns, not just selling some courses because I created some videos. There's a difference, right? Your job security, your career security, your business security comes from being able to have those tough conversations. That's a part of it and getting that respect from being proactive and knowing how to handle it. Because it might suck. People might give you bad energy, but when things fizzle out and then they have experiences with some of these other BS people out there, they'll be able to look at you in a different light, right? That distance creates a fondness. Man, at least he told me when stuff was going wrong and nothing else really went all that bad. That, that probably wasn't even her fault. All that stuff happens, right? Or I appreciate you, man. We'll still run another campaign. I had a client come back to us and now has been one of our like best client success stories because we realized that they had some money that needed to be refunded. It was like $260 and we hit them up. We were like chasing them <laughs> for a couple of months and they respected it so much. They're like, dang, I know y'all are honest people with that campaign went trash that we ran with them in comparison, right? Like that, what we wanted, what they wanted, it went pretty trash. And I think it kind of left a bad taste in their mouth, but we were so like serious about getting them their money back. They were like, Man, these people are some cool people though. And became one of our, like like I said, biggest client success stories ever. They've done so much for us, connected us with so many people in the industry. They've had some major collaborations. Um, I mean, it just, it just opened some doors, right? So those types of things matter. They all matter. Now, if you're serious about learning more about becoming a music marketer and actually providing service, or even as an artist, if you wanna understand how to think more like a music marketer, so you're not just out here running some campaigns and spending some money, but you're actually going through the thoughtful process of what it takes to blow up a song because those are completely different things. We have a free music marketer mini course in our brand man network space. We'll put a link in the description below. Now you do have to be approved to get into that space but check this description below once we launch it it is not officially launched by the time this video is released just hold your horses right just give it some time we will be opening it up pretty soon right if it's not again open at this time so check the link in the description if you really want to understand what it looks like to think like a music marketer and elevate yourself to be able to blow up music and get more tips exactly like this there's it's completely free check it out other than that if you understand there's extreme value in the artist marketer relationship and want to make sure you do not mess it up watch this video where i break down 10 mistakes that both artists and marketers make when working together Together. So make sure you watch it to make sure you don't lose any clients and artists to make sure you don't mess up a good thing when you have a good marketer. All right. See you in the next video.